The flickering gaslight cast long shadows across my workbench, illuminating an array of tools that would seem out of place in any ordinary craftsman's workshop. Silver-plated blades gleamed alongside vials filled with shimmering liquids, their labels inscribed with cryptic symbols. A crossbow, its stock inlaid with bone and silver, rested against a rack that held an assortment of arrows, their tips barbed and dipped in a viscous, dark substance that shimmered with an otherworldly luminescence. I am Silas, and my trade is an ancient one, a legacy passed down through generations of my bloodline. We are the Vigils, guardians against the things that lurk in the shadows, the creatures that whisper in the nightmares of men. We hunt the monsters. My journals, bound in thick leather and filled with meticulous accounts of my encounters, line the shelves of my study. Each volume is a testament to the horrors I've faced, a catalogue of creatures drawn from the darkest corners of folklore and nightmares, the flesh-rending barguest of northern lore, the soul-stealing Dullahan of Irish legend, the shape-shifting skinwalkers of Native American tales, and countless others, each one more terrifying, more insidious than the last. I've traversed the globe, from the mist-shrouded forests of the Carpathian Mountains to the sun-baked deserts of the Arabian Peninsula, always seeking, always hunting, always vigilant against the encroaching darkness. But my latest summons, a cryptic message delivered by a raven bearing a silver signet ring, promised a horror unlike anything I'd encountered before. The message was brief, etched onto a piece of parchment as thin and brittle as dried leaves. Whisper Glen awaits, the veil thins. Come quickly, Vigil. Whisper Glen. The name itself sent a shiver down my spine. It was a town whispered about in hushed tones amongst my kind, a place shrouded in rumors of ancient curses and unspeakable horrors, a place where the veil between our world and the realm of nightmares was said to be perilously thin. I packed my gear with a practiced efficiency, silver-plated daggers, a vial of wolfsbane elixir, a pouch of consecrated iron dust, a crossbow loaded with arrows tipped with a concoction of my own devising, a potent blend of silver nitrate, holy water, and the venom of a rare nocturnal viper found only in the deepest jungles of the Amazon. My latest acquisition, a blade forged from meteoric iron and inscribed with runes of protection, rested in its scabbard at my hip. It hummed with a faint, barely perceptible energy, a promise of power, and a warning of the darkness it was designed to combat. As I prepared to depart, my gaze fell upon a framed photograph on my desk. It was a picture of my sister, Alara, her bright smile a stark contrast to the grim tools of my trade that surrounded her image. She had always been the light to my shadow, the anchor that tethered me to humanity, a reminder of the world I fought to protect. I'll be back soon, Alara, I whispered, my hand brushing against the glass that encased her photograph and I'll make sure those shadows stay where they belong. With a final glance at my study, at the journals that chronicled my battles against the darkness, I turned and walked out into the night. The raven that had delivered the summons circling overhead, its harsh caw a harbinger of the horrors that awaited me in Whisper Glen. The road to Whisper Glen wound through dense forests and shadowed valleys, a path that seemed to shun the light of day. The raven, its dark form a silhouette against the moonlit sky, served as my guide, its harsh cause urging me onward. As I drew closer to the town, a strange stillness settled over the land. The wind died down, the rustling leaves fell silent, even the nocturnal chirping of crickets seemed to cease, as though the very air held its breath. A heavy silence, pregnant with unspoken menace, pressed down on me, a weight that seemed to increase with every step closer to Whisper Glen. The first signs of the town were subtle, a weathered signpost bearing the name etched in peeling paint, a crumbling stone bridge spanning a dry creek bed, a solitary mailbox leaning precariously on its rotted post. Each landmark seemed to whisper of decay, of abandonment, of a place forgotten by time and shunned by the living. As I drove into the town proper, my headlights illuminated a scene that sent a shiver down my spine. The streets were deserted, the houses dark and silent, 
their windows staring back at me like vacant eyes. Cars, covered in a thick layer of dust and leaves, sat abandoned by the curb, as though their owners had vanished without a trace. I parked my car in the center of town, the silence so profound that I could hear the blood rushing in my ears. The raven landed on the hood of my car, its dark eyes glinting in the moonlight, its caw a harsh punctuation to the unsettling stillness. I stepped out of the car, my hand instinctively reaching for the hilt of my meteoric blade. The air was cold and damp, carrying the faint scent of mildew and something else, a cloying sweetness that mingled with the metallic tang of ozone, a scent that set my teeth on edge. I walked towards the nearest house, its windows dark and lifeless. The porch steps creaked under my weight, a sound that seemed to echo through the deserted street. I peered through a dusty window, my breath fogging the glass, but I could see nothing inside but shadows and the faint glimmer of moonlight reflecting off a dusty floor. I moved from house to house, each one deserted, each one whispering of a sudden, unexplained exodus. The only signs of life were the stray cats that slunk through the shadows, their eyes glowing with an eerie luminescence in the darkness. They watched me with an unnerving intensity, as though sensing my purpose, their hisses and growls a warning to leave this place undisturbed. As I reached the center of town, I came to a stop before a weathered building that bore a faded sign, Whisper Glen Public Library. The library, its windows dark, seemed to beckon me, promising answers to the unsettling mystery that clung to this town like a shroud. I tried the door, but it was locked. I glanced around, noting a basement window partially obscured by overgrown ivy. With a swift kick, I shattered the glass, the sound echoing through the silent street, a jarring intrusion into the oppressive quiet. I hoisted myself through the window, landing with a soft thud on the dusty floor of the library basement. My flashlight beam cut through the darkness, revealing rows of shelves stacked with books, their titles barely visible in the dim light. The air was thick with the scent of mildew and old paper, a musty aroma that brought back memories of my childhood, spent poring over ancient tomes in my grandfather's study, learning the lore of monsters and the secrets of our ancient craft. I made my way up the stairs, the wooden steps groaning under my weight. The library's main floor was dimly lit by moonlight filtering through the dusty windows. Books lay scattered across the floor, as though someone had been searching for something in haste. Papers were strewn across a heavy oak desk, their contents obscured by the shadows. As I approached the desk, a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye caught my attention. I spun around, my hand instinctively drawing my silver-plated dagger, but there was nothing there, just the shadows cast by the moonlit windows, playing tricks on my weary mind. Just nerves, I muttered to myself, trying to shake off the unsettling feeling that I was being watched. I turned back to the desk, my flashlight beam illuminating the scattered papers. They were maps, hand-drawn and faded, depicting the surrounding forests and mountains. Strange symbols, similar to those I had seen etched into the silver signet ring delivered by the raven, were scrawled in the margins. As I examined the maps, a low growl, barely audible above the beating of my own heart, sent a shiver down my spine. It seemed to emanate from the shadows behind the desk, a guttural sound that vibrated through the floor and into my bones. I gripped my dagger tighter, my heart pounding in my chest. Something was lurking in the darkness, something that watched me, something that waited, and I knew, with a chilling certainty, that my journey into the heart of Whisper Glen's darkness had just begun. The growl deepened, a guttural rasp that seemed to vibrate the very foundation of the library. I didn't hesitate. Years of hunting had honed my instincts, sharpened my reflexes to a razor's edge. I pivoted on my heel, my silver dagger raised, its polished surface reflecting the meager moonlight filtering through the dusty windows. The creature, a hulking form that emerged from the shadows behind the desk, moved with a startling speed, its eyes glowing orbs of crimson fire fixed on me with a predatory hunger. Its skin, a patchwork of mottled gray and sickly green scales, stretched taut over a muscular frame that rippled with unnatural strength. 
Its teeth, long and jagged, gleamed in the dim light, dripping with a viscous saliva that hissed and steamed as it hit the floor. It was a dusk stalker, a creature of nightmares that preyed on fear and darkness, its presence a harbinger of deeper horrors to come. I had faced them before, in the shadowed forests of Eastern Europe, their guttural growls echoing through the trees, their crimson eyes burning with an insatiable hunger. The dusk stalker lunged, its claws raking across the air, missing my throat by a hair's breadth. I ducked, rolling beneath its outstretched arm, my dagger flashing out, finding its mark in the creature's flank. The blade sank deep, met with a hiss of pain and a spray of viscous black ichor that burned like acid against my skin. The creature roared, a sound that shook the library to its core, sending books tumbling from the shelves, their pages fluttering to the floor like frightened birds. It staggered back, clutching at its wound, its crimson eyes burning with rage and pain. I didn't give it a chance to recover. I lunged forward, my dagger a blur of silver in the dim light, striking again and again, each blow met with a hiss of pain and a spray of burning ichor. The dusk stalker, weakened by my relentless assault, stumbled back, its growls turning into whimpers, its movements becoming sluggish. With a final desperate roar, the creature collapsed, its hulking form dissolving into a cloud of black smoke that dissipated into the shadows, leaving only a lingering stench of sulfur and decay. I stood panting, my heart pounding in my chest, the silver dagger dripping with the creature's ichor. The encounter, brief and brutal, had served as a stark reminder of the dangers that awaited me in Whisper Glen. This was not a place for the faint of heart, a town where shadows held teeth and claws, where nightmares walked under the cover of darkness. As I sheathed my dagger, a voice, soft yet firm, broke the silence. Impressive. You handle a dusk stalker with a skill I haven't seen in many years. I spun around, my hand instinctively reaching for my crossbow, the stranger's voice coming from the shadows at the back of the library. My flashlight beam illuminated a woman, her form framed by towering bookshelves, her eyes glinting with an intelligence that belied her calm demeanor. She was tall and slender, her long dark hair pulled back in a braid, her features sharp and intelligent. She wore a simple black dress that contrasted with the pale skin of her face and the unsettling intensity of her gaze. Who are you? I asked, my voice wary, my hand still hovering near my crossbow. I am Mara, she replied, stepping forward into the light, her voice soft yet carrying an undercurrent of steel. The librarian of Whisper Glen, or what remains of it anyway, what happened here? I asked, gesturing to the deserted town beyond the library walls. Where is everyone? Mara's gaze turned distant, a shadow of sadness crossing her features. Gone, she whispered, her voice barely audible above the rustling pages of fallen books. Taken by the darkness that has claimed this town? What darkness? I pressed, sensing she knew more than she was revealing. Mara hesitated, her eyes searching mine as though weighing my trustworthiness. She took a deep breath, her voice gaining a new urgency. The darkness that has haunted Whisper Glen for generations, she said, her gaze fixed on mine. The darkness that called you here. Mara's words hung in the air, heavy with unspoken menace. The library, once a sanctuary of knowledge and quiet contemplation, now felt like a cage, the silence pressing down on me the shadows deepening as though closing in on us. Tell me what you know, I said, my voice firm, though a shiver of unease ran down my spine. Mara nodded, her gaze fixed on the scattered maps on the desk. Whisper Glen has always been... different, she began, her voice soft yet carrying an undercurrent of sorrow. There's a darkness here, an ancient presence that has haunted this town since its founding. She picked up one of the maps, her slender finger tracing a circle of symbols that mirrored those etched into the silver signet ring I carried. The founders of Whisper Glen, they stumbled upon something, something they shouldn't have disturbed, she continued, her voice dropping to a hushed whisper. A gateway, a portal to a realm of shadows and nightmares. 
I glanced at the symbol on the ring, a chilling confirmation of her words. The vigils, keepers of ancient lore and protectors against the forces of darkness, had long whispered of such gateways, places where the veil between our world and the realms beyond was perilously thin, places where nightmares could bleed into reality. They tried to contain it, Mara continued, her gaze fixed on the map, her voice a distant echo in the stillness. They performed rituals, erected wards, built this town as a bulwark against the encroaching darkness. But it wasn't enough. What happened? I asked, my hand instinctively reaching for the hilt of my meteoric blade. Mara's eyes met mine, her gaze filled with a chilling certainty. The darkness. It found a way through, she whispered. It took root in the heart of Whisper Glen, feeding on the fears and weaknesses of its inhabitants. It twisted them, corrupted them, turned them into something else. As she spoke, a cold wind swept through the library, rattling the windows, sending a flurry of dust and papers swirling through the air. The gaslights flickered, casting long, dancing shadows that seemed to writhe and contort as though alive. I gripped my blade tighter, my senses on high alert. The cloying sweetness in the air intensified, a sickly aroma that mingled with the stench of decay, a scent that heralded the approach of something unnatural, something monstrous. It started slowly, Mara continued, her voice barely audible above the rising wind. Whispers in the night, shadows moving in the periphery, strange dreams that lingered long after waking. But then, the disappearances began. Disappearances? I echoed, a knot of dread forming in my stomach. Mara nodded, her gaze fixed on the swirling shadows beyond the library windows. People vanished from their homes, their beds, their cars, she whispered, her voice trembling. No trace, no explanation, just gone. And the Dusk Stalker? I asked, remembering the creature I had encountered moments ago, its crimson eyes burning with an insatiable hunger. Just the beginning, Mara replied her voice barely a whisper now, her eyes wide with fear. The darkness is rising, Silas. It's gathering its strength, preparing to unleash its full horror upon this town. And you, you are the only one who can stop it. Her words, spoken with a chilling conviction, hung in the air, a stark challenge to my resolve, a call to arms against the encroaching darkness. I drew a deep breath, steeling myself for the horrors to come. Tell me what I need to know, I said, my voice firm, though a shiver of fear ran down my spine. Mara nodded, her gaze turning towards a heavy oak door at the back of the library, its surface carved with strange symbols that seemed to writhe and shift in the flickering gaslight. The answers you seek, she said, her voice barely audible above the howling wind, lie within the archives of Eldritch. She gestured towards the door, its oak panels groaning as though resisting her touch. But be warned, Silas, she whispered, her eyes fixed on mine. Once you enter the archives, there's no turning back. The darkness within those walls, it will change you forever. The heavy oak door creaked open, revealing a staircase that descended into darkness. A chill wind, carrying the stench of decay and the faint whisper of forgotten voices, blew against my face, as if urging me back towards the relative safety of the library. But curiosity, mingled with the weight of my vigil lineage, compelled me forward. Stay close, I said to Mara, my hand resting on the hilt of my meteoric blade. Its faint hum, a vibration that resonated through my fingers, intensified, as if sensing the presence of the darkness that awaited us below. Mara nodded, her gaze unwavering. She held a silver candlestick its single flickering flame casting long, dancing shadows on the stone walls as we descended deeper into the earth. The air grew colder, the scent of decay thickening, mingling with the cloying sweetness that had become a harbinger of the unnatural. The stairs, worn smooth by the passage of countless feet, spiraled downward, leading us into the heart of Whisper Glen's darkness. Finally, we reached a landing, 
a small, circular chamber lit by a single flickering torch that cast grotesque shadows on the rough-hewn stone walls. An iron-bound door, its surface covered in the same twisting symbols I had seen on the maps in the signet ring, barred our way. The archives of Eldritch, Mara whispered, her voice barely audible above the echoing drip of water from unseen cracks. Be warned, Silas. What you find within these walls may shatter your understanding of the world. I nodded, my hand reaching out to touch the cold metal of the door. The symbols seemed to pulse beneath my fingertips, a faint vibration that echoed the hum of my meteoric blade. I felt a tug, a pull, as if the darkness beyond the door was calling to me, beckoning me to step into its embrace. I pushed the door open, its hinges groaning like the cries of tormented souls. The air within the archives was thick and heavy, the scent of decay almost overpowering. Dust motes danced in the flickering torchlight, illuminating a vast chamber lined with shelves that stretched into the shadows. But it wasn't the sheer size of the archives that took my breath away. It was the contents of those shelves. Skulls, hundreds of them, lined the walls, their empty sockets staring back at me with a silent accusation. Some were human, others belonged to creatures I recognized from my journals. The elongated skull of a barguest, the horned skull of a dusk stalker, the grotesquely deformed skull of a creature I dared not name. Beneath the skulls, on shelves that stretched into the shadowy depths of the chamber, lay ancient tomes bound in leather and iron, their pages filled with cryptic script and disturbing illustrations. Ritual objects, their purposes unknown, rested alongside dusty scrolls and vials filled with unidentifiable liquids that shimmered with an otherworldly luminescence. The knowledge contained within these walls, it's both a blessing and a curse, Mara whispered, her voice trembling as she glanced around the chamber. Many have sought to unlock the secrets of the archives, but few have escaped their grasp. I ran my hand along a dusty shelf, my fingers brushing against a skull that seemed to hum with a faint, dark energy. The air crackled around me, the shadows deepening as though sensing my presence, my purpose. We need to find information on the hollow wraith, I said, my voice echoing strangely in the chamber's silence. Mara, you said it's been haunting Whisper Glen for generations. There must be some record of it, some clue as to its weakness. Mara nodded, her gaze sweeping the shelves, her brow furrowed in concentration. The archives are not easily navigated, she said, her voice hushed. They reveal their secrets only to those deemed worthy. As if to confirm her words, a low groan echoed through the chamber, followed by the scraping of stone against stone. A section of the wall behind us slid open, revealing a narrow passageway that led deeper into the darkness. A cold wind, carrying the stench of decay and the faint whisper of forgotten voices, blew from the passageway, as if urging us forward. This way, Mara said her voice firm, though I could sense the tremor in her hand as she raised the silver candlestick, its flickering flame casting long, dancing shadows that seemed to writhe and beckon. We stepped into the passageway, the stone walls closing behind us, sealing us within the heart of the archives. I gripped my blade tighter, its faint hum intensifying as we ventured deeper into the labyrinth of Whisper Glen's secrets, the echoes of the damned swirling around us, whispering their tales of horror and despair. The passage was narrow and claustrophobic, the air thick with the dust of ages. Mara's flickering candle flame cast grotesque shadows that danced and writhed on the rough-hewn stone walls, amplifying the whispers that seemed to emanate from the very stones themselves. I kept my hand on my meteoric blade, its hum a comforting presence in the oppressive darkness. The deeper we ventured into the archives, the more oppressive the atmosphere became, the air growing heavy with a palpable sense of dread. The passage opened into a small circular chamber, its walls lined with shelves stacked with even more ancient tomes and artifacts. A single brazier filled with smoldering coals cast an eerie red light that painted the chamber in hues of blood and shadow. In the center of the chamber stood a pedestal, and upon it rested a book unlike any I had ever seen. Its cover was crafted from obsidian, as black as night and as smooth as glass. 
Strange symbols, similar to those I had seen throughout the archives, were etched into its surface, pulsing with a faint crimson light. What is that? I asked, my voice a hushed whisper in the silence. Mara's eyes widened, her gaze fixed on the obsidian book. I've never seen this before, she whispered, her voice trembling. But I sense a power emanating from it, a darkness that chills me to the bone. I approached the pedestal cautiously, my hand hovering over the hilt of my blade. The air around the book crackled with an unseen energy, the whispers intensifying, the shadows deepening as though trying to shield the book from my gaze. It's as if it doesn't want to be found, Mara whispered, her voice barely audible above the pounding of my own heart. I reached out, my fingers brushing against the obsidian cover. The symbols pulsed brighter, their crimson glow intensifying, casting dancing patterns of light and shadow across the chamber walls. A jolt of energy, a surge of raw power shot through me, the hum of my meteoric blade intensifying, resonating with the book's dark energy. Visions flashed through my mind, fragmented images of swirling shadows, whispering voices, and a figure, tall and gaunt, its eyes burning with an infernal fire. I staggered back, my hand instinctively clutching at my chest, the visions fading, leaving me breathless and disoriented. Silas, are you all right? Mara asked, her voice filled with concern. I nodded, shaking my head to clear the lingering images. I... I saw something, I said, my voice shaky. A figure, a creature, surrounded by shadows. Mara's eyes widened, her gaze fixed on the obsidian book. The hollow wraith, she whispered, her voice barely a breath. You saw the hollow wraith. I glanced back at the book, its obsidian surface now dull and lifeless. The visions, fleeting and fragmented, had left an indelible mark on my mind, a chilling premonition of the horror that awaited us. What do we do now? Mara asked, her voice trembling. If the wraith is aware of us, it won't stay hidden for long. I drew a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation to come. We fight, I said, my hand tightening on the hilt of my blade. We find its weakness, and we destroy it. But how? Mara asked, her eyes wide with fear. We know so little about it. The legends, they speak of a creature that consumes souls, a being of pure darkness that cannot be killed. There's always a weakness, Mara, I said, my voice firm, though a shiver of doubt ran through me. Every creature, no matter how powerful, has a vulnerability. We just need to find it. I picked up the obsidian book, its weight surprisingly light in my hands. The symbols on its cover no longer pulsed, their crimson glow extinguished, replaced by a cold, impenetrable darkness. This book, I said, my gaze fixed on Mara. It holds the key to understanding the wraith. We need to find a way to unlock its secrets. Mara nodded, her gaze turning towards a narrow passageway that had opened in the chamber wall opposite the one we had entered. It pulsed with a faint crimson light, the whispers emanating from within growing louder, more insistent. It seems the archives have chosen our path, she said, her voice a hushed whisper. This way, Silas. But be prepared. The deeper we delve into the wraith's lair, the more dangerous it will become. The passage pulsed with a crimson light, a throbbing vein of energy that seemed to beckon us deeper into the heart of the archives. The whispers intensified, swirling around us, a chorus of tormented souls trapped within the stone walls. I could feel the weight of the obsidian book in my hands, its cold, impenetrable darkness, a stark contrast to the pulsing crimson light that guided our path. Mara stayed close behind, her silver candlestick a beacon against the encroaching shadows. The passage opened into a vast cavern, the air thick with the stench of decay and the cloying sweetness of the unnatural. A single shaft of moonlight pierced the gloom, illuminating a scene that sent a shiver down my spine. In the center of the cavern stood a stone altar, its surface stained with dark, viscous fluid. Bones, both human and animal, lay scattered around its base, as though the remnants of countless sacrifices. And above the altar, 
suspended in midair, shimmered a swirling vortex of shadows, a gateway to the realm of nightmares. The hollow wraith, a creature of pure darkness, materialized within the vortex, its form shifting and coalescing, taking on a shape that defied description. It was tall and gaunt, its limbs elongated and skeletal, its skin a patchwork of shadows and swirling darkness, its eyes burning with an infernal fire fixed on me, a chilling recognition in their depths. You dare trespass in my domain, Vigil? The wraith's voice, a rasping echo that seemed to emanate from the very stones of the cavern, reverberated through the chamber. I gripped my blade tighter, its hum intensifying, a beacon of defiance against the encroaching darkness. I am here to end your reign of terror, Wraith, I said, my voice firm, though a tremor of fear ran through me. The Wraith's laughter, a chilling sound that echoed through the cavern, sent shivers down my spine. Foolish mortal, it hissed, you cannot defeat me. I am the embodiment of fear, the devourer of souls. I am eternal. The Wraith lunged, its shadowy form blurring, its claws raking towards me. I raised my blade its meteoric iron shimmering in the moonlight, and met its attack. The clash of metal against shadow resonated through the cavern, a spark of defiance against the overwhelming darkness. But even as I fought, I knew my blade alone was not enough. The wraith was a creature of pure energy, its form shifting and coalescing, its attacks unpredictable, its power fueled by the fear that pulsed through my veins. I glanced at the obsidian book in my hand, its cold darkness a stark reminder of the secrets it held, the key to unraveling the wraith's true nature. I had to find its weakness, its vulnerability, before the darkness consumed me. Mara, her face pale but resolute, stepped forward, her silver candlestick held high. Silas! The book! she shouted, her voice barely audible above the wraith's echoing laughter. It showed you a vision, a glimpse of its past. Remember what you saw. Her words pierced through the haze of fear that threatened to overwhelm me. The vision, fragmented and fleeting, returned with a chilling clarity. The wraith, its shadowy form writhing in agony, chained to the stone altar, its power drained by a ritual, a chant, a sequence of symbols. The symbols, the same symbols etched into the book's cover, the symbols that had pulsed with a crimson light, the symbols that resonated with my blade's power. I raised the book high its obsidian surface reflecting the wraith's burning eyes. I see you, wraith, I shouted, my voice ringing with a newfound confidence. I know your weakness, and I will use it to destroy you. The wraith hissed, its shadowy form recoiling as if struck. You, you cannot, it rasped, its voice filled with a sudden fear. The ritual, it's been broken, the gateway, sealed. Not yet, I said my gaze fixed on the swirling vortex of shadows above the altar. But it will be, and when it is, you will be trapped, banished back to the realm of darkness from whence you came. I began to chant the words from the obsidian book, the ancient syllables resonating with my blade's power, amplifying its hum, sending waves of energy that rippled through the cavern. The symbols on the book's cover glowed, their crimson light intensifying, casting a protective barrier around me, a shield against the wraith's attacks. The wraith shrieked, its shadowy form writhing in agony as the power of the ritual, fueled by the echoes of the damned, the countless souls it had devoured, surged towards the gateway, sealing the rift between realms. With a final, ear-splitting roar, the wraith was pulled into the vortex, its form dissolving into tendrils of darkness that were swallowed by the closing gateway. The obsidian book in my hand crumbled to dust, its purpose fulfilled, its secrets returned to the shadows. Silence descended upon the cavern, broken only by the echoes of the wraith's demise and the pounding of my own heart. The darkness had been vanquished, for now. Whisper Glen, though scarred by the wraith's touch, could begin to heal. The echoes of the damned, finally silenced, could find their rest. And I, Silas, the Vigil, would continue my journey, forever vigilant against the shadows that lurked at the edges of reality, a guardian against the nightmares that haunted the human heart.